Nitrocell e-commerce presents the Carousel Builder. By definition, a carousel is a conveyor on which objects are displayed or rotated. But in web store terms, carousels are used to display items or images to promote sales. The Carousel Builder allows you to easily add slideshow images and populate featured product panels on your homepage. Carousels are also responsible for related items, purchasing history, and recommended items panels on product pages. You can also create new carousels for a variety of other applications. In this demonstration, we'll explore the different types of carousels and how they're controlled. Carousel Builder is found in the Web Store Manager under Design and Content. From here, we're presented with four tabs, Manage Carousel, Populate Carousel, Carousel Options, and Carousel Preview. Starting with the Manage Carousel tab, we can select a carousel or create a new one. To explore how carousels are populated, I'll create a new one. Once I've named the new carousel, it's created and then available in the list of editable carousels. Selecting to edit that carousel, we move to the Populate Carousel tab. We can see a drop down menu that allows us to choose how to populate it. At this time, the options include Manually, By Rule, By Recently Viewed Items, By Image, By Field, By History, and by related discounts. Populate manually allows you to add items by entering item names. Populated by rule allows you to create a simple rule to automatically populate based on your item data. By recently reviewed items is based on that user's shopping history. Populated by image is the option used to populate slideshows or other promotional image areas. By field enables you to control exactly what items appear related to a product. Populate by history is used for customers also bought and is based on actual user data collected over time. By related discounts refers to supported POS discount schemes. For example, if the item has a mix and match discount, the carousel will display other items of the same mix and match discount. Having established what makes a carousel, we can move on and explore the predefined carousels and finally experiment with making more. Going back to the Manage Carousels tab and selecting the home page slider, we can see this carousel is simply populated by images. The interface is relatively straightforward. To view the current slide, it's as easy as clicking and dragging the image, or you can select the previous or next slide buttons. To change an actual slide, choose File. The bottom right corner features useful tools too, including Reorder Slides, Hide Images, which is used to select a date and time for slides to appear, Image Information, Edit Slide Title, Caption, or Link, and Add New Slide. You'll notice that hints appear in the bottom right corner of the screen describing what each tool is for. The number one question with regard to image carousels is, what size should my images be? The best way to know is inspecting the images currently in your slideshow. Here we can see my images are 1920 pixels wide by 600 pixels high. If you like the height of your carousel, you can upload replacement images of the same size to maintain that height. Furthermore, you control the overall height of your carousel by the height of the images within it. But they must be uniform. Otherwise, the carousel height will change from slide to slide. For example, images 300 pixels high will result in a relatively thin carousel, whereas 800 pixels high will consume most of the vertical space on the page. Please note, you should maintain your slide's width to avoid image stretching. Quickly now, I'll add a new slide. First, I'll check my current image properties. Then I'll adjust my image to match those using Microsoft Paint. Then I'll select New Slide and choose File. I'll make this one the first slide in the show. Change its title, caption, and link. Jumping ahead to the Preview tab, we can have a look at our work. In this case, I'd like my slides to move faster, and rather than slide, they should fade. By selecting the Options tab, 
we're presented with a list of adjustable parameters which will enable us to implement those changes. It's a good idea to experiment with these options to gain a full understanding of the features available to you. Moving on, we'll take a look at one of the many predefined product carousels. New product, promotion, and special offer are by default coded to display on the home page beneath the home page image carousel. Editing the new product carousel, we can see it's populated by a rule, and beneath, we see the rule's parameters. If an item's new attribute in PAM is marked 1 or true, then that item should be in the carousel. This is the default setting, but it can easily be changed with a few clicks. For example, let's assume all the bells is new this month. I could create a rule if brand equals bells. Before we create our rule, we can also choose to sort the results by PAM priority, item name, price, or randomized, and then to ascend or descend that order. Finally, we can limit the number of items to appear. By selecting Add, the rule is in place. Please note that if I don't delete the other rule, an item would have to be marked both new equals true and brand equals bells. So I'll delete the previous rule so that all Bell's items will appear on the carousel. To test the results, select Update to see your list. Please note that if an item does not have an image or is not in stock, it will not appear in the carousel. And if no items are in the carousel, it will not display at all. Both the promotion and special offer carousels have similar rules, looking to the true or false values in PAM for their related attributes. The final set of carousels appears on the product pages beneath the product details. Items related by theme and recently viewed items. Inspecting related by theme, we see it too is populated by a rule. In this case, it's referring to the theme attribute in PAM. So that if an item's theme equals X, other items with theme X will appear. More automatic is the recently viewed carousel. This feature uses its own population method. Simply put, it keeps track of what the customer has looked at. This information is stored in cookies, so that when they return to your web store, they'll see what they'd looked at before. This completes our review of the predefined carousels. Moving on, we'll create our own to demonstrate the remaining population methods. And we'll discuss how to add a new carousel's code to your HTML templates. Let's assume we don't have access to PAM, but we'd like to fire sale some items for the weekend. We'll create a new carousel and populate it manually. Simply by adding valid product names, the utility will search and present us with options to add. Once we've added our items, the carousel is complete. However, until the proper code has been added to your template, the carousel won't appear. The code is as follows. Change carousel name between the quotes to the name of the carousel you've created. In this case, the code is Placement of this code in the template is the most important step. You should only take the step if you have experience and have backed up the templates before editing. In this case, the other homepage carousels are located here, so I'll add our code above the others, so it will appear first. If you're not comfortable with this process, please contact Nitrocell Support to assist you. Provide the carousel name and where you'd like it to appear. Our next demonstration will show how to strictly relate items to a product or show the items which make up a kit. This feature allows you to target exactly which add-on items to promote on a product page. Let's assume we'd like to feature these beer accessories on bottled beer product pages. To accomplish this, we need to tell the web store what items should appear on this product page. Please note the following steps are detailed in the Creating Attributes and Field Mapping tutorial. To implement this, we'll start by creating a string attribute. Next, I'll locate an item to prepare and add a list of related item numbers to our newly created attribute. Item numbers need to be comma separated. Next, I'll map the new attribute to an available custom text field. Going back to Carousel Builder, I'll choose the custom text field from that list.
Lastly, we add the proper code to the product page template. Those item numbers represent the items that will be featured alongside this primary item. A favorite feature for many is typically labeled Customers Also Bought. I'll create a carousel called History and toggle its population method to History. This feature uses all purchase history on the web store to show what other items were purchased at the same time as the product displayed. Obviously, the longer your web store is live, the better the results. New web stores should wait a few months before implementing this type of carousel. Our last carousel will feature items of the same discount scheme. Nitrocell supports certain POS discount schemes like mix and match discounts. By using this population method and adding the code to the product page, if an item belongs to a scheme, other items of the same scheme will appear on that page. This can be very useful in maximizing the profitability of discount schemes. In summary, Carousel Builder is a dynamic utility for featuring products and driving sales. This concludes the Carousel Builder tutorial. Thank you for watching. Nitrocell e-commerce, helping you succeed online.